डिड यू नो दैट जैगरी गुड इज नॉट हेल्थियर देन शुगर गुड इज नॉट गुड नॉर इज ब्राउन शुगर नॉर फ्रूट जूसेस नॉर हनी और दैट डिटॉक्स ट्रीटमेंट्स आर नथिंग बट अ वेस्ट ऑफ टाइम एंड मनी एंड लाइक अ होल बंच ऑफ मिसकनसेप्शन वी हैव अबाउट फूड Let's you, talk about that. You are ending careers of people with that statement. You are this ending businesses. Cha- this whole channel is about that. About ending careers and businesses. Yes, of people who should not be running those careers and businesses in yes. the first place. Yes, thank you. <coughs> channel band karwaega ye. So see, a lot of people Haan. are under the misconception that oh, good, I can eat good because it is healthier than sugar. Okay. Yes, that's what we've been told all this while. And why is it supposed to be healthier? Because it is not sugar. It's it natural. Minerals. It is natural. It is not processed, right? Sugar yeah. is bleached. Yes. Right. So reality. Huh. Most of jaggery is sugar. Okay, it has the same molecules in it. Yes. The extra minerals that it has are so minor that they make no difference to your health. Okay. Okay. And. If you ever look at real raw unprocessed jaggery yeah. it is ugly dark and sticky yes. nobody would buy it okay so jaggery itself that you buy is also processed that is also bleached okay not just that but jaggery has a high ph okay, okay. ph as in you know it is a slightly I, acidic yeah. and if you put it in milk it will curdle the milk so they cannot sell it directly Okay, so they add chemicals to jaggery to, to reduce the pH, right? So jaggery is not natural; it is bleached, it has chemicals, and it is mostly sugar. Okay. Okay. It is processed Haan. just like sugar, except that it is processed in factories without any regulation and by people without degrees. At least sugar has regulations and degrees. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. right? So you are right; not good for you. Well, as I know, it is equally as good. Or as bad as sugar. One good thing, though, mm-hmm. is that it has a better, more interesting taste, right? So, mm. but you know, just accept the fact that you are having something as bad as sugar, but for the taste. As long as you understand that, that's fine. Just don't be under the misconception that is somehow good for you because you know you switch good with <laughs> sugar. Okay. Yeah. But then how about uh, oh, how about demerara brown sugar? Brown sugar, right? About a hundred years ago, hmm. in the process for making sugar, if you stopped a little early, hmm. right? You didn't do the full refinement. Yeah, the bleaching and uh, what not. You know, earlier stage huh? used to be sold as brown sugar. Okay. Okay. That was hundred years ago. Nobody sells that thing anymore. Today. Huh? If you go and buy brown sugar, what you get is people hmm. who make sugar and then add brown to it. Wait, what? Yes, brown sugar today is sugar which has been processed, so it is brown. Sugar which has been purposely made impure. Yes. Ah, uh, why would they do that? And what's the? I mean, so again, you know, people are under the misconception that oh, brown sugar means it is healthier than sugar. Oh, and it has minerals. Okay, it has iron or yeah. whatever, right? Hundred gram of brown sugar will give you fifteen percent of your recommended daily allowance of iron. Okay. If you eat hundred grams of sugar, you will probably die much before yeah. iron becomes an issue for you. <laughs> yeah. There are no other useful vitamins or minerals in brown sugar. Okay, and I was, I was actually thinking. Hmm. So I have to eat six hundred grams of sugar to get my absolutely <laughs> daily quota. I didn't think about the fact that six hundred grams of sugar is a bit much. <laughs> the good news is that brown sugar is more dense than sugar. <laughs> so am I <laughs> clearly. <laughs> so one teaspoon of brown sugar actually contains more sugar than one teaspoon of sugar. Okay, so do not have brown sugar unless you like the taste of brown sugar. Okay. Okay. So then what? I switch to honey instead of any of the sugars. Honey is ninety-nine percent sugar. Ah. Okay. One teaspoon of honey has more sugar than one teaspoon of sugar. Okay. <laughs> minerals honey has only trace quantities of minerals okay most of the claimed health benefits of honey hmm. there is no 
research backing for that. Right? Okay. There are some minor benefits, mm -hmm. which is that if in small children, mm -hmm. they have a cough, you give them honey and it suits the throat. Yes. Not very small children, Not don't give it to children be below one year of yeah, age. Yeah, of and even that benefit doesn't exist for adults, right? So if you want to have honey, do it for the flavor, not because there are health benefits, right? But honey actually does coat your throat when you have a bad cough and reduces symptoms of the cough. I'm not saying it reduces the cough reduces itself. The symptoms for children in adults, it is a placebo effect. Okay? Fair. Yeah, I All do right. agree. So what you're now going to switch to fruit juices? Yeah, that's the only other, I'm trying to think of what other sugar substitutes I can think of other than the, uh, the chemically created ones, which is yes. your sugar freeze and naturals and yeah. splendas and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah, fruit juices seems to be the only other way to consume healthy sugar. Yeah, it is sugar. It's not healthy. Okay, because it is still sugar. Okay, it's not sucralose, other sugars, but they are also sugars. Okay. Having them is equally bad for your health, right? Same effects they have in fruit you, right? juices are healthy. No. Fruits are healthy. The reason fruits are healthy is twofold. One is because there is fiber in them. So along with the sugar, you consume fiber and that fiber is really good for you. And second is that that fiber also ensures that you can't eat too much of that. You try to eat too much fruit and you will actually get tired. So that is what ensures that you can't have too much of it. And juice keeps the bad parts of a fruit, the sugar, and throws out the good parts, which is the fiber. Okay. I've been doing this all wrong my entire life very clearly, yes. which explains a lot of things. Yes. So, all sugar is basically terrible. You have to basically avoid sugar is what you're saying. In general, there are a lot of people who feel that sugar is much worse for the world than cigarettes and alcohol and a whole bunch of other things, right? Sugar is one of the worst things that has happened to the modern world. We have increased the consumption. And by sugar, you mean the molecule, not just the processed sugar bit. Of course, yes, right. The good news mm -hmm. is that more and more of the world is catching on to this fact. Lots of people are reducing sugar, but there is a bit of a problem, especially for diabetics, yeah. right? Diabetics, everyone knows that you are not supposed to have sugar. What they don't realize is that you also have to cut down on carbohydrates because in your body, the carbohydrates gets processed and ultimately they become glucose. So too much carbohydrate is also going to give you a sugar, sugar spike, spike just spike. a little later, right? Yeah. So in fact, one of the most interesting new modern things that is going on mm. is something called continuous glucose monitoring. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, for about five to ten thousand rupees, mm -hmm. you can get a device and a patch, right? Mm -hmm. So you put a patch and the device, and it checks your blood sugar automatically every fifteen minutes. Oh, and typically you do this for two weeks, and you also keep track of what food you ate at what time, and whether it caused a spike or not. Ah. And one of the most fascinating things that happens mm -hmm. is that you realize all kinds of surprising things about yourself. The first thing is that every person mm. has a different reaction to different foods. Okay? okay. So I will give you an example of one of my friends. Mm. Okay. Mm. He ate strawberry ice cream. Mm. Okay. Obviously blood sugar shot up from 120 to 190. Makes sense. No yeah. surprise there. On a different day, mm. he had Caesar salad. Mm followed by a meal consisting of shrimp and spinach. Okay. After the meal, mm. he had strawberry ice cream. Again shoot up? Nope. BSL went from 120, stayed at 135. Ooh. Never shot up to 190. So the Caesar salad and the shrimp spinach meal helped in some way to yes. reduce? The fiber in those mm. slowed down the absorption of sugar, oh. right? And a whole, I know more of my friends who have found all kinds of interesting stories like this about mm. what affects their blood sugar, right? Ooh. So another friend who discovered that rice by itself causes a spike, curd by itself causes a spike, but curd rice doesn't cause a spike. This friend was South Indian, no? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
a lot of interesting surprising things i'm learning today about food and sugar specifically yeah. misconceptions no let's move on from sugar and let's move on from diabetics right let's yeah. move on to misconceptions about just regular food right Please. all kinds of old wives tales right cucumber hmm. kakadi have you ever taken a kakadi chopped off the edge and done this 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 to it to reduce the bitterness to reduce the bitterness yes there is no such thing it does nothing to reduce the bitterness okay but they said it does reduce the they bitterness said, they also said that if you eat carrots you will get like really good eyesight see i know that one was basically a spy op by britain during the second world war exactly and these things just spread for no good reason you who know? spread the kakadi thing well, i want to meet that person and ask him how many times did you do this 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 this, this? okay spicy foods cause stomach cancers yes no bacteria cause stomach ulcers yeah. some painkillers cause stomach ulcers okay yeah. so chili actually reduces acid production in the stomach so it might help with that right the problem is that later on in your elementary canal if there are like you know problems that's where chili is a problem right but not in stomach ulcers Actually. I need to go visit my gastroenterologist. Yes. Yeah. Also, non-veg food makes you aggressive. No, it doesn't make you aggressive. That's just made up by people who don't like non-veg food. Okay. I am the most docile person on earth. Yeah. It doesn't make me aggressive, you know. Haldi has amazing medicinal properties. No. Right? Haldi causes all kinds of problems because too many Indians overconsume haldi and they end up at a liver doctor's <laughs> clinic then there are some people who say that you know you should have an alkaline diet and that reduces your acidity and they give you a list of foods which are alkaline you know if the ph of your body changes you will die okay, <laughs> yeah that does an excellent job of managing the ph on its own you don't need to have an alkaline diet okay yeah. I've heard about that. There Another is this thing called alkaline water that is currently being sold by the bucket God. load, truck God, load. Yes. Yeah. But even simpler. Yeah. Oh, you must boil milk before drinking. You mustn't. If you are taking milk from a cow, huh. then yes, boil it. But I don't think you are taking milk from a cow. I don't think you are taking milk from a cow, and none, neither are you, right? You get milks in packets. I don't think my milk seller will appreciate being called a cow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you get milk from a packet. All modern milk that we get yeah. from packets is already pasteurized and homogenized, yeah. right? There is no need to boil it unless you are doing it for the taste, right? or so, to separate the cream for whatever reason to right, separate the exactly. fat for whatever reason right. if you want to separate the cream that is fine but there is no health reason for boiling the milk the bacteria are already dead yeah yeah the pasteurization process makes sure that the bacteria are dead yeah so in general hmm. there is one very interesting principle that comes up from this whole boiling milk thing okay. right that a lot of modern technology hmm. has gone into increasing the convenience of food preparation okay. like you know milk that is pre pasteurized so that you don't have to waste time boiling it correct correct fridge hmm. so that you can make food once and then store it for a day two days or something like that yeah but for some reason hmm. a lot of people get very worked up that oh this modern things they are making our food bad and you shouldn't do that like there is all kinds of people who will come with knives at you because you shouldn't keep food in the fridge it makes the food toxic and wait what food how does fridge makes the food toxic it just chills the food down to a temperature where exactly. there is no further activity have you heard of people saying that fridge makes the food toxic yes lots of people say that in fact there are people who say that food should be prepared fresh and consumed within 4 hours that is ideal but no it is not ideal it makes no difference what food is nice to eat man reheated microwaves were given by god for this purpose okay which god <laughs> philips <laughs> kenstar samsung lg the point is that a lot of people and many of these are men right who go around saying that we should stick to these traditional ways of preparing food it's because those men don't have to do the work of preparing the food 
right? They want fresh food for every meal and then just walk off and sleep, right? Whereas the women like work in the kitchen all day and they have nothing else to do with their lives because they have to prepare fresh food every few hours. I am not that kind of guy. I just like eating hot food prepared by anyone. Me, my wife, my mother, my uncle, whoever. Hot food is nice. Yes, microwave gives hot food. Start using it. Make food. I put it in the fridge. Take it out. Microwave it. It is equally good, equally delicious. Okay. Fine. All right. All right. Fine. Yeah. But hold on. Uh, you also said something very early in the beginning about uh, detox being not not right or yeah, not. So work. There is like this entire cottage industry huh. of people who sell you like these 15 day detox courses, right? They will put you on some like spinach diet, only spinach juices all day. And uh, they might even do colon cleansing for you and so on, right? Okay. Our system does a very good uh, job of detoxing, okay? Job of detoxing is the job of our kidneys and our liver and they do it fine. This okay. detox stuff, there is enough research showing that it does nothing for you. Okay. Some of it, some people, hmm. the biggest benefit they get is that they lose weight. Sure, if I forced you to drink spinach juice every day, you will stop eating and you will lose weight. Okay. That, 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 that nothing surprising about that. Note to myself, drink spinach juice every day. As long as you don't have access to any, sure, as in, you know, you go and live in some forest somewhere and the nearest bag of potato chips is 100 kilometers away, yes, you are going to lose weight, right? Yeah. So, yeah, if you are doing I mean. it for that reason, uh, go ahead, right? But do not... So it's not the, it's basically not the spinach juice. It's the absence of the potato chips around the spinach juice. Yeah, there are the a whole bunch of these other uh, diets, right? Like I don't know, Dikshit diet and what is Dikshit diet? Oh, you just stop having all milk items and your diabetes comes under control. The simple fact is that if you remove all milk items, all the good stuff goes away. No paneer, no. Uh, mithai, nothing, right? You yeah. are going to lose weight. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to control your diabetes. So, yeah, but uh, detoxing in certain cases does help. Like, for example, if you're trying to do a drug detox, that that's a different definition of detox. Oh, okay. okay. So, if you are addicted to alcohol, hmm. then you go to a de addiction center and there, that at alcohol detox, the drug detox, hmm. they are useful, they work, but hmm. that's not the detox I'm talking about. I'm talking right. about the detox where they make you drink lots of like, green tea and yeah. lots of spinach and kale juice. Right. Uh, no, no, drink 15 glasses of juice until you throw up and then you say, well, now my stomach is clean. Don't do that. No, of, of course I'm not doing that. That just sounds. There are people doing that, so you have to stop. Okay, please stop doing that. Please Please don't fall prey to all of these nonsense detox ideas and nonsense detox diets unless they are scientifically proven and by scientifically we mean double blind randomized control trials that's the gold standard yes. right so detoxing if it's not drug and alcohol detoxing waste of time uh, sugar all kinds of sugar is bad for you anything just, if it tastes sweet it is bad for you anything that is good is bad for you yes. <laughs> is essentially the crux of this episode a lot of misconceptions have been cleared unfortunately in this episode i apologize but that's what naveen does clears out a lot of misconceptions especially the ones that are helpful so another misconception you probably have is that you are middle class you are not check out our episode on misconceptions about income distribution in india check that out naveen shrikant future iq